This is the biblical timeline number 24, and we talk about Israel's failure. And of course what we've done in our timeline here is we've gone through and, and learned that there was a time before the Old Testament, before the law was delivered by Moses to the Jews. There was a time when there were no Jews. And then there's a, been a long period of time we've come through where uh, the Bible is mostly Jewish all the way up to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then we came into Acts, and we've seen that there's been a transition going on from Peter to Paul, from law to grace, and that's what we're in the middle of right now, is in that, that period of transition. And last week, we looked at the conference in Jerusalem, and we saw that the apostles in Jerusalem, the twelve, recognized that Paul was given a special revelation from the risen Christ to take a different gospel to the Gentiles, right? In other words, they got together and they saw that. But they, the, the twelve, never agreed to teach that gospel to the Jews. They had their own gospel of the kingdom. They were going to continue teaching to the Jews. They just proved that Paul would go to the Gentiles and teach the, the gospel according of Jesus Christ according to the mystery. So... Uh, they wanted Paul to teach his gospel to the Gentiles, not to the Jews. So let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verses 7 to 9 again and look at that. Really, it's in Acts more than anywhere that I see that people don't know how to study. Because they look through these, through, through Acts. We're going to Galatians chapter 2, verses 7 to 9. I say Acts because... Galatians chapter 2 corresponds to Acts chapter 15. They're both telling the same story as we saw last week. And I'm there. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you told me. Uh, in verse 7 it says, But contrary wise, when they saw, that's when the twelve apostles saw, or their representatives, that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me. Now this is Paul talking. So when he says the gospel of the uncircumcision, uncircumcision means the Gentiles, the people who are not circumcised, and that there's a gospel up for the Gentiles that was committed to, to me, Paul. He says, just as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. So he's using Peter as a representative of the twelve, of the Jewish apostles, and he says that he has a gospel that was to be taken to the circumcision or to the Jews, is what that means. And then he says, for he that wrought effectually in Peter. Now the he that wrought, of course, is God. That, that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, or to the Jews, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. So pretty much Paul is saying that God sent Peter and the other apostles to the Jews just like he sent him to the Gentiles. And he says, and when James, Cephas, which is Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me. So he's saying they saw something in Paul. They saw that he had received some grace from God. They gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go to the heathen which is another word for the Gentiles or the non-Jews, and they unto the circumcision, which is unto the Jews. So that's what we saw last week. That's where the division was made. That's where Paul was supposed to go preach his gospel to the Gentiles, and Peter and the apostles were going to continue preaching their gospel to the Jews. And it was a great plan. That was their plan. It's right here in the Bible. It's a plan they made together. What went wrong with that plan? Well, what went wrong with it, because they agreed to something. And when I say what went wrong with it is we're going to see in a minute here that uh, <coughs> while they made peace that day, that peace didn't last very long. And it's because the, not only is the Bible progressive, but so are Paul's revelations are progressive. So what Paul knew then that he shared with them wasn't all of what he learned from the Lord. Uh, and, and that's what the problem is with what's called covenant theology. Covenant theology. Many, many Christian religions teach covenant theology. And that theology means that God kind of made only one covenant or one gospel that kind of counts all the time to everybody. That everything just kind of flows together and there are no differences. 
And so in their case, when it doesn't fit, when something doesn't fit with that part where it says, well, it's all the same, it's all for all of us, and then you hear one side saying, no, you're under the law, and the other side saying, no, you're under grace, well, they make that fit by spiritualizing it, by saying, well, well, when he says under the law, he just really means spiritually. And so they change the meaning of it to make it sort of be the same. And what's the worst thing that you can do to them is read the Bible literally. Because if you read the Bible literally, in other words, you take it for what it says, that God means what he says in it, just as simple as it's put there, then they no longer have covenant theology. They can't say it's all the same, it all comes together. The only way they can even imagine to do that is by spiritualizing or changing, saying, well, that's a figurative thing, that doesn't really count for us, when it's something different. So, in other words, like this new guy, Bell, that they're talking about and everything, he, he likes to spiritualize it because that way he can say, well, what does this mean to you, Frank? Well, Karen, what does this mean to you? And you see, God's word is just whatever it means to any of us. And that's what they're doing. But what's so, what, what is so um, deadly about that is it fits right in with tolerance. They're saying, well, we're going to be tolerant of all religions, so everybody can, whatever you think, well, that's good. That's God's like that for you, even if you don't think there is a God. You know? So anyway, Paul continues to, see, to receive more revelations from my Lord, and that kind of messes up the plan that he was going to teach to the Gentiles only, and the Jewish apostles were going to teach to the Jews only. Let's read these verses first, and then we'll try to imagine how they sounded to the Jews. Let's go to Galatians chapter 3, verses 21 to 28. Let me say at this point that if anybody wants to go on home, I mean, I don't mean to keep you, but I'll just keep on going on, you know, so I don't want to hold you all. We're going to listen to you until the tree comes in. All right. Here we go. Galatians chapter 3, verses 21 to 28. Is the law then against the promises of God? Paul asks. Because here we're talking about how we're, we're not under the law anymore. Well, is the law against the promises of God? And he says, God forgive, forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. And to make that a little easier to understand, let me just say, let's read that, for if there had been, again, and say, for if there had been a law given, which could have given righteousness, verily righteousness should have been by the law. In other words, he's saying, if there's a law that you could have followed that would make you righteous, then that's the way righteousness should have come, is by the law. If you could sit there and you've got your, your list of things you're supposed to do, and you could do them, then you don't need grace. You just do them yourself, you earn it, and you've got it. So that's what he's saying. He says, if, if it could have been done, if, if it was able to be kept, then that's how righteousness would have come. We'd have just done it, and we'd be righteous. He says, but the Scripture hath concluded all under sin. So he's saying, so nobody's been able to be righteous. It's concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe <laughs> So he says, that, but that's not possible. If it were possible, that's the way you could have gotten it. But it's not possible, so it has to be by faith to those who believe. Then he says, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. In other words, before we believed in Jesus Christ, we were under the law. And if we had died, we were subject to the law. Did we obey the law, or did we not obey the law? We were shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. And this is especially true, of course, of the Jewish nation. They were under the law. 